Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Today's Best Stock Picks. It's Monday morning, March 29th, 2021. Uh, interesting week starting. We've got a lot to cover today. We're going to talk about the markets. We're going to talk about two stocks that got absolutely clobbered last week, why it's being reported it happened. And more importantly, we're going to go deep dive into reading the tape. And if you look to buy these stocks on this massive pullback, what is the right price? I'm going to actually show you the price that I'm looking for. And I'm actually going to give you a big list of semiconductor stocks right now uh, that are in play. We have a lot to talk about. We're talking about semiconductor stocks, uh, chip stocks specifically, uh, electric vehicle stocks, whether or not they're in play. We're going to talk about home builder stocks today. So that's kind of the recap for today. We're going to start out looking at the market. However, I'm going to give you right now the list of the top 25 stocks that I'm going to be looking at heading into this week. They meet all of my criteria. Obviously, when we watch order flow, it has very strict criteria. So it meets our order flow criteria. It meets our liquidity criteria. It meets our opportunity criteria. And that's what we're looking at heading into the week. So I'm going to post this link below the video. You can watch it. But I'm going to start out with sector rotation before we actually get into looking at the market. So I'm going to share... Uh, the screen right now, share the list so you can see it, but I'll give you the link below. If you're trading stocks, this is the kind of game planning you need to do every night, never mind every weekend, but the weekend's obviously the easier time to do when a couple of, couple of days can settle in, a lot of news over the weekend. But the most important part I want to show you right now is the sector rotation and how that translates into um, conviction in your trading ideas, and more importantly, how that conviction translates into position sizing. One of the biggest mistakes that traders make is that they believe that all trades are the same, and nothing could be further from the truth. When you, when you think about trades, we talk about tape reading, we talk about building an argument, there's, I have the entry, and, and like all those little kind of decisions, whether there's order flow, how far you are away from the optimal entry, what is the optimal profit target? is the reward potential uh, in sync with the risk you would need to take on the trade. All of those pieces go into making a decision, which ultimately affects your position sizing and how you build the position and when and how you take profits. So what I'm gonna point out now is we're gonna show very quickly, uh, well, not quickly, <laughs> we're gonna talk about um, the sector rotation and the what it means for conviction levels and how that conviction plows into uh, position sizing. Okay, so we're going to head on over to the charts. I'm going to show this uh, disclaimer really quickly. Everybody can take a look at that. You can pause that if you want. Um, so we're going to start out with looking at this list. This is the list of stocks that are um, below here. You can actually click on the link. But what I want to talk about here first um, is this, is you'll notice that it's not very widely um, represented here. Out of these 25 stocks, there's only one, and we're actually one sector that stands out in a big way. Uh, technology a little bit, but that's what we're talking about now with the chip sectors. Um, but my point is this, uh, when you look at that, that looks okay. You can find some ideas. I'm going to talk about a few of these stocks. This is really what I want to talk about. You can see here from uh, basically about two or three weeks ago, the market traded really well, and that was an easier week to have conviction, an easier week to size up, an easier week to get in there and go and get it, right? Then only one week later, the market completely turned and you'll notice that um, energy stocks, which were at the top of the list for two weeks in a row, as a matter of fact, they were the sole, uh, the sole recipient of any buying pressure. Uh, and again, right, really strong, but then went to the bottom of the list. So you started to see rotation again, although they were still green, so we still had some, some good trading. Then two weeks ago, we actually had most of the stocks trading red. So again, leadership is not there from one week to the next one. So at, again, what I'm getting across here is how does this affect how you trade? Then last week's trading, the strong, although the market was the last two days of the week reversed and traded strong, look at where we were for the week. We have one, two, three, four of the major sectors that were barely positive or negative. The top of the list was utilities and real estate, which are mostly real estate investment trusts, and then consumer defensive was uh, consumer defensive and technology and industrial. So we do not have sector leadership right now. From one day, any place that you read right now, it is um, agreed upon, for lack of a better way of putting it. Everybody agrees right now that sector rotation is happening quickly. There is lack of consistent leadership. We do have the, the chip stocks we're going to talk about in a second. However, this is a trading lesson that you need to take home. This is a trading lesson that should affect 
uh, how often you're in the market, how long you're in the market, which is another thing, especially as an active trader, um, and your conviction and position sizing, which is when you lack leadership, when you can't say for one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two, three months, that's the sector, that's the industry group, that's where the smart money is flowing into, and it's easy, it's obvious, easy to spot, obvious what they're doing, and then you just look for entries in that direction. When that is lacking in the market, you're going to feel like your head's getting beat against a wall because you think you got it, and then it comes back. You think you got it, and, think, and, and breakouts fail, breakouts fail, breakouts fail. That's what you need to recognize once, twice. The third time you start doing it again, you keep taking these breakouts that aren't following through. You continue to trade with heavier share size. You're not realizing that the market is offering a little bit less. And that's where it's deceiving because the market is um, – everything's lining up as if everything's perfect in the SPY, especially in the S&P 500. The NASDAQ's a little bit weaker. It hasn't caught up. So what we're looking for, I'm basically giving you a framework for what we're looking for right now. We're still in a little bit more of a cash flow mode. We're still in a little bit more where we pulled back on active swing trades. A lot more stock specific, a lot more stock specific, even from one day to the next. And that makes trading uh, a lot more blue collar as opposed to getting in there and just saying everything's going up. It doesn't matter what I buy, which brings us over to the electric vehicle stocks where those were raging buys for a while and they have kind of disappeared. We actually called a short sale last week in Tesla where we said you have to watch these levels and 560 could end up being the next level. And the stock as of right now has not seen anybody step in. I know there's the Kathy Wood news. Everybody watches her in the stock market as you should. She's obviously very good at what she does. Uh, but as of right now, she's obviously playing the long game. She's not trading for the next two or three months. So if you have margin in, in some of these stocks and they're continuing to go down, you need to make some decisions. You need to know what your uncle point is. And here's the thing. Professional traders, when they lose money, have to take a loss, which is a perfectly normal part of trading. Um, the first thing that goes through our minds, how do I make it back? How do I? You don't sit there in a position that's losing, 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 losing until you get a margin call. You say, okay, that was the risk I accepted on the trade. Then I'm going to look at another position. I want to make that money back. I want to make that money back. Don't put yourself in a position where you're helpless because then you're taking the responsibility off of your shoulders and you're putting them on somebody else's. And in this case, you're hoping that the sellers stop. And that's not a good position to be in. So be on top of sector rotation, be on top of the market, be in the right stocks in those sectors. Like we're going to talk about the chip equipment stocks right now. Uh, and then you have a much better chance. But remember, you need to respect risk. If stocks start to go down, like a lot of those electric vehicle stocks are doing right now, you need to know what your risk point is and you can always get back in and make it back up. So we're going to actually head on over to the charts right now. We're going to start out looking at the spy. Now, again, we just gave you the full overview of what the market uh, looked like under the hood in the sectors. We kind of reversed that today. If we go over here and we take a look at the spy ETF, everything looks great. We pulled back, held support, rallied again. Friday, though, we did a, a YouTube short where we said we're not looking to get long. I'm not holding overnight. I didn't like the way it looked. Volume midday was just putrid. I know at the end of the day, this number looks good. Intraday was anything but that. Uh, and just to give you an idea of what the intraday price action was across the board, and this is not necessarily for day trading purposes as much as it is to give you an idea of how the end of day candle can look deceiving, the SPY pretty much drifted sideways, had a little rally, it pretty much did nothing for the first few hours of the day, despite the gap up, which obviously that's significant, right? Had a little bit of a breakout, then started to roll over heavy, and then out of nowhere and the last hour of the day, massive buying came in and we closed really, really strong, which gave the impression that we were just off to the races and everything looked great. But intraday, it looked anything like anything but like that. The volume was a little bit lighter. So we were trading, mostly day trading for cash flow. It came into the weekend. If you happen to be in our Swing Trade Tracker uh, membership, uh, I'll post a link for that below as well. Uh, the alert service didn't have any new swing trades heading into the weekend. We were actually flat because of the um, lack of clarity that we saw. And that's just a part of trading. A part of trading is first preserving precious capital. And that's what we did. So you can see over here in the queues as well, we'll go back out to the daily charts. Uh, we're kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere. So chip stocks are strong. The queues are kind of in the middle of nowhere, which leads us into what we're looking at today. There's an actually an interesting play today. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, VIAC and DISCA, two stocks that were literally uh, just slow grinding uptrends that wouldn't stop for months, got hammered last week. We'll take a look at those two charts, but more importantly, 
I'm going to take a look at where I believe the trading opportunity is. So you can see these stocks, DISCA, and we're going to focus mostly on Viacom right now. Um, this is the story. This is what's being reported. Plunge due to part forced liquidation of Archegos Capital positions. So that's why after the fact, right? That's amazing. It's interesting. Everybody read the same exact story. But what is the trade? Where is the actual trade in here? So this is what we're going to talk about. We want to know where the smart money started to finish where they were dumping stocks. Where are they done selling? Where did the uh, distribution finish? And where do we feel like now that's the price that matters to us? Because it typically goes down. You have this massive spike in volume, finishes, and then that's the level. You need to know what that level is so that if it gets back above that level, that's where the next trade is. So we're going to actually jump down to a little bit shorter time frame here. And you can see here in Viacom, most of this volume started to happen around $50. So essentially what we're looking at here is right here where the where the spike started to happen, bigger volume, and then across the board, it, it's kind of skidded a little bit through that, but 50 is the level that I'm going to be watching today. We're roughly $2 below that. If it gets back above 50, it starts to close there on a little bit shorter time frame. That's where I'm going to start to build a position. Same thing with Discovery, D-I-F-C-A, excuse me. Uh, so essentially, same thing on the way down. If we draw that same line, we'd pay attention to where. So what this does, I just want to give everybody a heads up. What this does is it keeps you out of bottom fishing. As It goes down, you see the spike, you're like, oh, I want to get in, I want to get in. If you believe it's turning around, if you believe that the, the reason for all the selling happened is done, you want to start to pay attention to where all of this happened. And this is right around $45. So we're still around $1.25, $2 maybe away from that area. So those are the alerts that I'm going to have set during the day. And again, I want to make it clear. These are anything but A-plus trades. These are active trader, tape reading, get in under the hood and really understand what you're doing. It's not for a new trader, but I want to point out that there's so much more to do than just say I want to be a buyer of a stock. So we broke down the market, we broke down the sectors, we talked about position sizing, and now we just went into a pretty advanced trade. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into those chip stocks that we were talking about and pop this back out on the daily chart. Uh, so we're going to take a look at, I'm going to give you a list that I'll, that'll be in my game plan today, ASML, pretty good clean breakout here. LAM Research is the next one. Again, needs to get up above 600. Uh, KLAC. And one thing about these stocks, if you're day trading them, sometimes the spread can get a little bit wide. Uh, so if that happens to be the case, Intel is obviously another one that you can keep an eye on, which is not a wider spread stock. You can see that it actually broke out to all-time highs, pulled back hard. We need it back to get back above that 66 level. Texas Instruments is another one. Obviously broke out now on increase in volume. So there's another one. Uh, and AMAT. AMAT we had last week at 125, finally got back above that 125 level. So we're keeping an eye on this one today again as well. Um, three other stocks, <laughs> three other stocks in the home builders you want to take a look at that are in my radar today. DHI, DR Horton, actually getting a lot of headlines this weekend. Pulte Homes, again, you can see finally we called this out midweek last week. So hopefully you participated in that one. Uh, and Lennar, we were talking about this one from early in the week last week. Two other off-the-track stocks are STLB, which actually pulled back, held support, and broke out to new 20-day highs. So above 50 is where we're looking to make sure it stays there for our next trade. Uh, and CVS, actually. CVS getting some good news last week. Finally got back up to the $76 level. We're looking for it to stay above that level. I want to touch on the EV stocks, as we promised. Tesla is basically below everything. I'm actually going to go over to the weekly charts because that's what we said we were watching for. The weekly charts, we want to see smart money. We want to see deep pockets step in, pay higher prices, hold higher lows, higher highs, higher lows on the weekly charts. And we actually got the opposite of that in Tesla last week. We had lower highs, lower lows, and we closed near the lows. And it looks like 613 lower opening as of right now, which is a few hours before the market opened. And we did say last week 560 and then 450 are the next two levels. Those buyers need to step up here. So same thing with Neo. You can see Neo clearly doing the opposite of what you would need to see to step in and be a buyer. Lower lows, lower highs, and XPEV on the same page there as well. Okay, giant bearish U-turn in XPEV. So a lot going on today. Um, I'm telling you right now, what we're doing mostly in our boot camp in our community right now uh, is we're shorter term trading. We're trading for cash flow. 
We're looking for some solid ideas like we just pointed out here. We're looking for a catalyst to get some follow through, uh, but I'm not building many longer term positions right now because a lot of breakouts have been failing. So we want to get up there, see confirmation of a day or two in some of these stocks we just pointed out and then look for the next move. I've been pulling back on swing trades. They just haven't been following through. So really the better swing trades that have had a better risk reward profile are the uh, swing trades that have pulled back uh, very much. Actually, you know, let me show you, let me show you uh, one last one, um, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. I uh, have been tripped, maybe two more that could be on your radar this week. Let me actually get rid of that. So you can see actually trip pulled back and then had a nice two day rally and Expedia as well, same thing. Uh, so these have been the better plays that have had pullbacks, lower risk profile, and then um, better reward profile on the rally. So uh, three day weekend coming up, Good Friday coming up this week. So we're trading Monday through Thursday this week. Just keep that in mind as you're managing any, any potential trades towards the end of the week. I a lot to do. I'm very excited about this week. I'm actually all pretty jazzed. Uh, we're opening lower, as I called. If you watch that YouTube short that I did on Friday afternoon, uh, we, we pointed out how the stocks and the market was specifically trading. That end of day surge into the last hour was a little bit deceiving. If you didn't watch the market intraday, just went home at the end of the day, be like, oh my gosh, what a, what a beautiful day. And it, it really wasn't. We had the gap up and a lot of sideways price action. So we did not go home long over the weekend. The market's opening lower. Maybe we'll get some better opportunities to get some good entry prices today too. So thank you so much. Give us a thumbs up. If you find this kind of video helpful, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment below. We always get back to you as soon as you can. So have a great day, everybody. Be profitable. Be awesome. And I'll speak to you soon.